Yeah, um, thanks, Chair Haney. And um, actually, I just want to start by thanking everyone who spoke during public comment. You know, all of your, um, um, so many of you, and 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 all of your your diverse um, perspectives on this project. And I think it really, again, just reflects um, the the really important. It, the, the huge importance of this project um, for the Sunset District and our city and the importance that it's successful and, and that we get it right. Um, you know, I've, I've been very clear about my support of this project as a much needed and really groundbreaking step in addressing the urgent housing affordability crisis in our neighborhood and city and really to preserve as a step towards preserving the historic character of the Sunset District um, as a beacon for working class families. And you know, I, I campaigned on bringing affordable housing to the sunset. And as District 4 supervisor, this continues to be one of my top priorities. In 2550 Irving, housing for low and moderate income families and essential workers is exactly the kind of housing we need to be creating in our neighborhood. Um, but getting the details of 2550 Irving right is also extremely important, um, not only for the success of this, this project in our neighborhood, but for the additional affordable, affordable housing projects we need to build in the sunset and on the west side. And I do want to clarify that the action that, that the committee is considering today is only to approve the loan agreement for site acquisition and pre-development work by TNDC. And um, while some, some general parameters and goals of the project are specified in the proposed funding allocation from the mayor's office, such as prioritizing housing for low-income families, most of the details of the project are still to be finalized with public input and, and also I think based on a, lar a large part on, on the financing plan. Um, so um, again, I wanna thank TNDC and the mayor's office for bringing this important project forward. Uh, colleagues, I, I do have a set of proposed amendments um, to the mayor's draft resolution um, that um, I would like to present and, and they, they were emailed out by my, my staff um, this afternoon. Um, and, um, but actually, be before that, I, I also did want to make a few other points, um, uh, you know, regarding the environmental issues and, and, and the environmental oversight. Um, like all projects, but especially one that sets an important precedent, transparency and process matter. And as a leader on environmental oversight issues, I do have reservations to approve the loan ahead of the completion of the DTSC oversight process. I am also unconvinced that waiting for the completion of the DTSC approval of the environmental response plan will compromise the development. And, and it, it is important to have a clear public participation process and outcome when it comes to environmental oversight. And frankly, it, again, it's very frustrating to me that TNDC and MOCD didn't complete the DTSC oversight process before bringing this loan approval um, for the board, board to consider. So again, colleagues, I believe it would be prudent for us to um, postpone approval of the loan agreement until after DTSC oversight, the DTSC oversight process and approval of the environmental response plan is complete. Um, and then finally, it, it's clear that, you know, from public comment that we've heard today and, and a lot of emails and, and messages that we've received that 2550 Irving has been contentious and controversial as, as new precedents often are and how this project will be designed, its height and its scale, who it will serve and how it will impact neighbors. Congestion, fear for public safety have all been issues that have deeply divided the neighborhood in controversy. And I do believe there's room to address contentious issues and find solutions that build consensus and steps need to be taken to bring the neighborhood together. As a committed long-term partner on the Irving Corridor, TNDC will need to work more closely with neighborhood stakeholders in the face of division to build broad community support for expanding affordable housing in the sunset and on the west side. TNDC and MoCD must improve their community engagement and meaningfully incorporate community input into project design and details. And while SB 35 has eliminated much of the formal um, public process um, once, once it goes to the entitlement process, um, we must go above and beyond formal requirements and elect for, for more neighborhood engagement as a matter of being a good neighbor and as an investment in, in a successful project. And we know from our city's history and experience building affordable housing that residents of affordable housing become pillars and leaders in the community. They fight for more neighborhood resources, build public safety, keep homes safe, advocate for better transit. 
So with the approval of this loan, TNDC has the opportunity to build bridges now and the relationships during pre-development to create the best foundation for both current and future residents to thrive. Um, so colleagues, I, I do, again, I have a set of amendments that I'd like to present. Um, and, and then I, I do wanna make a motion that we continue this item um, to take an action on this item until after the DTSC um, oversight process is complete. Do you want to do the the am amendments now and then uh, maybe Supervisor Safai and I can make our comments and then I'll turn it back to you for the motion? Sure. Sure, I'd be happy to do that. Um, so so I um, I worked on some amendments basically to to add some important details to the the resolution um, that I felt should be included um, and work with the mayor's office on, on the language of them. So, so they're good with all the amendments um, and they, they were emailed to you on um, this afternoon, but I could just summarize them. So um, um, so there's seven, we're, I'm proposing adding seven new whereas clauses and then two new resolve clauses. Um, and in summary, um, three, of the, the, three of the whereas clauses just our, our key points about the, the need for the project and the urgent need to expand affordable housing in the Sunset District. Um, one of the, the new whereas clauses is, is from the BLA report and, and it's just adding the clause noting that the city's, city's intention um, to take ownership of the project um, and enter in, into a ground lease um, for, uh, for the property. And um, and then the and then the, the third thirdly there, there's a whereas clause um, um, urging um, MoCD to um, to consider including families living in SRO hotels in the project because that was something that that the community has been advocating for um, and, and this is housing for low-income families. And, and SRO, people and families living in SRO hotels, as you know, are considered homeless in the city. Um, and then finally, the, there, there's a, um, a whereas and resolve clause um, acknowledging the, the diverse, um, um, diverse um, perspectives that have been expressed about this project through, through, that, through comments that, that city officials have received and, um, and urging Mo City and TNDC to have a transparent community process to find an equitable balance between the goal of maximizing housing units and, and also addressing concerns of nearby residents about height and scale um, with, within existing zoning and feasibility. So that, yeah, you want to that, make, that's kind of a summary. You want to make a motion on those amendments? Unless yeah, I would, if I didn't have any questions or comments on the amendments themselves. Um, Madam Clerk, why don't we take a, a, a motion, uh, um, a vote on the motion to accept those amendments. Yes, on the motion to accept uh, the amendments articulated by Supervisor Marr. Um, Supervisor Safayi. Aye. Safayi, aye, Member Marr. Aye. Marr, aye, Chahaney. Aye. Haney, aye, there are three ayes. Great, amendments are accepted. Um, anything more, Supervisor Marr, before we, uh, Supervisor Safai and I make our comments and then I'll turn it back over to you for the motion. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I, there, there was one additional um, um, whereas clause um, in the set of amendments that, that I shared with you, but I didn't mention verbally. And that is, is just to, a, a whereas clause um, describing the, the Department of Toxic Substance Control oversight over the um, um, the environmental assessment and, and response plan. So. Great, thank you. Mr. Chair, can we please vote on that additional amendment? Sure. Yes, on the additional amendment um, articulated by Supervisor Mar, by Chair Safai. Aye. Safai, aye, Member Mar. Aye. Mar, aye, Chair Haney. Aye. Haney, aye, there three ayes. Amendment is accepted. Uh, Supervisor Safai. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Supervisor Marr, um, for all your hard work on this. Uh, thank the Mayor's Office of Housing staff for their work. 
um, and TNDC and their engagement. I know that this has been, in some ways, baptism by fire uh, for you to go through this process. I know it hasn't uh, been the most uh, enjoyable uh, thing to be accused of, of, you know, salacious criticisms. And, and all you're trying to do is bring an honest conversation for uh, building affordable housing in a part of town, as you've said and many have said, that I think has produced 17 units over the course of its time. Um, and I say that from a place of experience. Uh, I represent part of San Francisco, Excelsior Outer Mission, oh my Lakeview, uh, that has the highest concentration of owner-occupied single-family homes. Some of the longest standing uh, generational families, uh, working families, uh, that are going through a very similar experience that the Sunset and District 4 have gone through, where not that long ago, you could find a home on a salary of a working, working family, a middle-class family, you could afford to live in that neighborhood. And so for the families that have been there 30, 40, 50 years, let's rewind the clock. Let's think about what it costs for you to move into the sunset at that time. Let's think about what it costs to move into the Excelsior um, at that time. On a janitor's salary, you could buy a home in District 11. And in fact, we have the highest concentration of, of janitors, homeowners, uh, from the union that I used to work with um, in my district. And many of the families, working families of the sunset are the same. Today, like my district, the homes go for north of a million and a half dollars, two million dollars in the sunset. So the cost of housing is extremely out of reach. And I think Suraj Ramar reflects that in his comments about the changing nature and, and, and the survey that was done and the response from that survey. Almost 4,400 people applied for affordable housing. Only 35 from the sunset, only 35 were accepted in other parts of San Francisco. We need to have balance in where we provide affordable housing everywhere in this city. So the time where neighborhoods would say they don't want affordable housing, that time has come and gone. Now, the idea that you might want a three or four or five story building, um, that also does not pencil out. But I leave the final parameters and the shape of that uh, to the district supervisor, respectfully, uh, Gordon Marr, and I know Supervisor Marr will continue that conversation. Uh, but for those listening at home, to be competitive, to get the funding that you need to build affordable housing, a project has to be competitive with projects around the country, I'm um, excuse me, around the state. And that's how they get the tax credit monies allocated to the local level. If this project is too small, or if this project is not providing enough, it will not be chosen. And we at the local level don't have that level of financing to fund a $100 million development in one shot. We, we use local money and we match it with state and federal money. So for me, now transitioning to the issue of PCE vapor, in, in the DTCS report, only one out of 66 oil samples were found to have PCE. And the draft and the recommendation of response uh, to TNDC's response was that a vapor uh, intrusion mitigation system would be done. So anytime, and this is not unusual in development, they they conceal, they wrap it, and they and and the use of concrete and vapor stabilizes the issue of of, of very localized contamination. Also, for those that said the surrounding neighbors are not being in consideration, actually, offsite environmental conditions were studied. And every time they they found, they looked for all of the information said that all of the samples were well below unacceptable risk levels. So I think there's more conversation that needs to be had around the environmental um, 
uh, concerns for sure. There will be an opportunity for people to respond, but affordable housing takes time. In my district, we finally are breaking ground like this one will be the first ever affordable housing, uh, family affordable housing in District 11. 130 and 137 units respectively are under construction for the first time in the district. And, and, and very similar to a lot of the neighbors that have spoken today, there were concerns about parking, there were concerns about height and density. Um, but what I would say is we have such a dramatic housing crisis in this city. Every floor we remove, are homes for families, working families, those that want to contribute, the those that want to stay in our city. Um, that doesn't mean at all height, at all size, at all bulk, we're going to approve anything. There's always room for conversation and negotiation. Um, but we have to do more in terms of building affordable housing and spreading it around equitably. And that's what we did in my district. So I'm speaking from experience of going through what what district four is now in a conversation for i also think that that tndc i encourage you to continue to do more aggressive community engagement i think in the beginning um, there was a lot of misinformation and that allowed there to be uh, concern and, and and misinformation spread to neighbors that are not aware of what this means in terms of building affordable housing so um, i i believe that this is a good opportunity to purchase land. Uh, TNDC and, and the city have been in conversations with the, with the police officers, credit union for over two years. They're coming to an end of that period. Uh, and the fact that there would be conditions that said in terms of finalizing the loan, they would have to have a, a, a certified and positive response and action plan with regard to mitigating the environmental concerns uh, gives me the confidence that this is the right thing to do uh, and move forward with this purchase. And uh, respectfully, uh, Supervisor Marr, I think that we can con continue to have the conversations around what I heard the most about today, uh, but we don't want to jeopardize the loan process and we don't want to jeopardize site control for the community. So thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Supervisor Marr, for the amendments that you made today. I think they were very helpful to clarify and put in some really important points um, that talked about process and involvement. And appreciate uh, the report from DTCS, uh, uh, SC, I'm sorry, DTSC, that gives us clarity. But um, we, we feel confident that this is the right time to move forward. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Supervisor Safai. Um, before I make my comments, I, I want I had did have a question uh, for uh, the folks from OCD, um, and that's about your uh, rental housing portfolio and uh, and and District Four in particular. I know there were some comments made about how much uh, affordable housing had been built in in District Four. How much of MoCD's portfolio is in District Four? We currently have another project in the pipeline, which is the Shirley uh, Chisholm Village Educator Housing Project, about 130 units. Um, that is most city-sponsored, city-sponsored affordable housing. I don't believe we have any other city-sponsored new construction affordable housing other than that project. We have had a number of small site preservation projects that we have worked on um, with the supervisor. But I can double check with our team. I don't believe we have any other new construction, city-sponsored new construction project, with the exception of Shirley Chisholm Village. So, just 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 to to be clear, there in so the in 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 the entirety of District Four currently, there is not any existing uh, Mo CD city-sponsored affordable housing that was new construction that exists currently. There's zero. Is that correct? Yes, and it looks like from our team that that is correct. Um, we have had preservation um, projects, but not new construction projects. That Sterilatism is the only new construction project in the pipeline, in addition to um, potentially 2550 Irving. And over the last 10 years, how many uh, affordable rental housing units have been built in District 4? I understand, well, there's no cities. Uh -huh. 
sort of new construction. So then the affordable housing that exists uh, would be, I assume, in acquisitions. How many total? It would be through, um, through the inclusionary process. So there could be inclusionary below market rate units through the inclusionary program. And um, I can pull up our dashboard and take a quick look and see, um, and our portfolio and take a quick look and see how many um, potentially, um, if we've tracked the inclusionary units um, for District 4. Got it. Um, okay, I, I had listed somewhere that it was 18. Um, I believe that's right. From the housing balance report, that that's what they would be tracking, and that would be from the last 10 years. Got it. Okay. Um, so uh, a couple things about that. I mean, the, the first thing I would say is, um, you know, how how groundbreaking and overdue um, this project is. Uh, I think we would all agree. Uh, even some of the folks who had concerns about this project, that there's a tremendous need for affordable housing in our city, including in the sunset. Uh, rents in the sunset, home prices in the sunset in District 4 have gone up exponentially, just like everywhere else in our city. Uh, and we know that uh, subsidized affordable housing, affordable rental housing is a big part of the solution uh, to ensuring that people can afford to live and stay in our city. Um, this project will mean that uh, uh, at least 98 families, uh, whether they are teachers, bus drivers, uh, people who are in some cases formerly homeless, will be able to stay in our city and afford to be in San Francisco and live in the sunset. And I think that um, that in of itself is a very powerful uh, overdue uh, um, opportunity that we should be celebrating. Um, and that is really um, an incredible thing that uh, this has never happened. <laughs> um, I think uh, one of the things that I hope that we can come out of uh, from with this project is that this should happen so much more often, um, that we don't only need this building, we need uh, many, many more buildings like this um, in District 4, across our entire entire city, and that it needs to happen uh, much quicker and much more often. Um, I think a situation where um, we have not had a single uh, uh, new construction, affordable housing building ever built in District 4 um, in San Francisco is absolutely shameful, um, considering the need there. Um, uh, I represent District 6, and District 6, I pull up the number, we have uh, over 14,000 affordable rental housing units in District 6. We have over 3,000 uh, multifamily new construction units in 28 buildings. Uh, we have, um, uh, over the last 10 years, added over 4,000 affordable housing units in District 6. And I think what this uh, has, has demonstrated to me, and I hope what we can also understand, is that it's completely unsustainable uh, for us to continue to only build affordable housing um, in one uh, corner of our city, um, whether that's District 6 or, or parts of, of District 10 and 9, sometimes 3. That is um, unacceptable. Um, it hasn't met the need of our city. And neighborhoods like the Sunset can benefit tremendously from affordable housing and need it, just like neighborhoods uh, in, in Mission Bay, Soma, Tenderloin, Treasure Island. Um, so I'm uh, um, not only supportive of this project, I am um, jo overjoyed that, that, that it is happening and I feel uh, uh, that it is overdue. Um, and I think that um, I wanna appreciate everyone who, who has called in and, and who has given their input. Uh, I think wherever you stand on this project, you can be uh, proud of the way that your supervisor has uh, gone um, and done everything that he he can to take input, um, to hear people's voices, but also to stay focused on uh, the needs of of the residents that he represents, um, who are uh, uh, struggling with the cost of housing and struggling to stay in in the city, just like uh, everyone throughout San Francisco. So uh, you know, I, I do think that uh, having heard the responses about. Um, the, the fact that this loan is conditioned uh, on 
uh, the project approval from D DTSC already, um, that there are a number of reasons why the loan should move forward today. There's also an, uh, a, a number of parts of this uh, project that still will need to be worked out. And this is just one of the many steps that still need to be taken. Um, I am also going to support us moving forward with this today, though, I, again, I appreciate uh, the, the position of uh, Supervisor Marr and, and his leadership on this. Uh, I think there's tremendous urgency uh, to move this forward and to get it done. Um, and uh, many of the, the further details and community engagement will continue after today. Uh, and I, I want to appreciate uh, everyone from OCD, uh, the mayor's office, uh, Mayor Bree, uh, and TNDC. TNDC is, is, uh, has the name Tenderloin in it and uh, develops a lot in District 6, but also has developed in the Haight, Upper Haight, Lower Haight, Hayes Valley, Candlestick Mission. Um, this is a citywide um, affordable housing developer with a with an incredible reputation um, in our city and the people who will live in this building um, will add to the neighborhood will help to improve the community um, will only um, be a benefit to the, to the neighbors uh, and um, ultimately um, 98 units is a step forward but it's a small step forward we need many many much larger steps forward and I think we as a, a city have to demonstrate that we can move forward with this quickly and efficiently and effectively. Um, so um, with that, I'll, I'll turn it back over to you, Supervisor Mar. And again, I appreciate you and your leadership and your team. Um, and I'll allow you, know, you, you to make uh, the motion. Thank you, Chair Haney. And, um, and, and actually, so I, I do want to say that, you know, I'm disappointed that, um, you know, here it, it sounds like I, I'm not going to get support on my um, request to, to delay or the vote. Um, on the loan, on the resolution, on the loan agreement, um, until after the DTSC um, oversight um, process is complete and, and they sign off on the um, the response plan. Um, but I, I do appreciate, you know, both bo both of you, your strong support of this project and and um, and all of your words of um, um, encouragement to me and, and my constituents. Um, and um, you know, Supervisor Haney, your sort of contrast. Um, between District 6 and District 4 when it comes to affordable housing. I think that is a pretty stark contrast. And um, I don't know that where District 4 is ever going to get to the level of, of affordable housing development that you have in District 6. But um, but I think that, you know, your, your point is well taken. And, and I think affordable housing in the sunset is going to look different than it does in District 6 and and, and maybe more like it, it'll look like it in District 11. And just given the, um, yeah, the the physical makeup of our neighborhoods and um and and honestly that that's been one of the, the sources of tension around this project because um the site the size of the site and, and where it's located um right you know right next to single family homes um it isn't an, is not an, an ideal site for for the traditional um for the city's traditional um approach and, and model of 100 percent affordable housing development but i think we you know again Today we're just considering action on approving the loan agreement that that'll just allow the site acquisition and pre-development work, and the, the details um, of this project are still to be worked out um, by TNDC and the mayor's office with community engagement. And I'm fully committed to to helping to push, you know, push for that and ensuring that the project is is going to be successful for the sunset. So, um, so I, and I, I guess I so I would like to move that we. We send this item forward to the full board with positive recommendation. And with my amendments, I would also like to be added as a co-sponsor. Thank 